Uh, hi everyone, um, Ivo Rambo McLean for life once again for another movie review and of course gonna be another James Bond movie review and that's gonna be the ninth movie in the James Bond series and that's The Man with a Golden Gun. The second movie that Roger Moore did and of course um, the, se uh, the, the last movie that Guy Hamilton directed based on a novel uh, Fleming 007 and of course um, it's the 12th book of the series and uh, it was released on 19 December 1974 and of course um, of course it was filmed from 1973 till uh, 1974 even though the, that uh, uh, Roger Moore was contracted to do to do the filmings in April 1974 but seriously the second Roger Moore movie, I love to death. I love, love this movie to death. Um, I still prefer this movie, you know, Leo Let Die, which was the first Roger Moore movie that he did, uh, which he also, Roger, Roger Moore stated, it was actually his second, uh, second favorite film he did, you know, his second best film. Um, but I love The Man with a Golden Gun, you know. I think, uh, watch, re watching this film again, um, it's been now like four years, since I uh, last time watched this film, but rewatching again, I really enjoyed this film. I mean, I still think uh, that Roger Moore, with his charm and his um, his enthusiasm, you know, his charm, enthusiasm, his uh, um, uh, I still think that he did a good job. I, I definitely think that the man, the Golden Gun, deserves more credit than it got. Um, Leo and Die and the man with the Golden Gun, they have the both um, six point eight. On IMDb, which is awesome, which is cool. Um, I love this movie to death. Um, the the movie is about um, the um, I did wrote it somewhere down. Um, it's actually said, you know, in the face of the energy crisis, you know, 1973, uh, 1973, Britain, um, 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 the Britain uh, had still not yet fully overcome the crisis, you know. Um, and of course the, the uh, Destiny of Crisis in Time, the movie was released in December, you know, 1974. They were actually more set in the face of energy crisis, you know, that time. And, uh, of course, um, Bond, you know, once again, he goes and, uh, kicks ass, you know. Um, Bond becomes the target of an assassin called Francisco Scaramanga, played by, um, uh, Christopher Lee. Uh, Christopher Lee and Ian Fleming were cousins, you know, so this is the first time and of course um, Christopher Lee uh, said that the character um, He said that the character Francisco Scaramanga is actually his favorite role that he ever played um, But of course uh, I love this movie um, I have a friend that uh, considered this his favorite Roger Moore film Yes, he said that this is actually his favorite Roger Moore film. I also have a, a co-worker, you know, among friends that she told me um, that uh, that she actually told me um, <clears throat> um, the uh, Nang Bay, Thailand, you know, the Skarmanda Beach House where 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 um, Bond and uh, um, uh, good night escape from uh, Scaramanga's Island, you know, and that island, you know, um, it's now a true, it's actually a tourist uh, island, which is set for tourists, and she told me that one of her friends, she came and visit that island, you know, the final, the final shot uh, on the, the man with the golden gun, you know, of Han and Gabe, Thailand, and she sent her a video and the, the pictures, you know, the island. And before the, the filming, you know, before the filming, this film, the island was uh, abandoned at that time. It was deserted. Now it's a tourist island it's called James Bond Island, you know. And a lot of people came uh, visit. I would like to visit someday that island. But it's, uh, but now because of the pandem pandemic and crisis, I can't do that, you know. I would love to see the, the, the final shot, you know. Um... To where the, the final shot, you know, that has this, but the final shot, we we'll like to see, you know, the the island, you know, um, but yeah, <clears throat> uh, 
Um, James Bond became the target of uh, of a well-known assassin, the best of the world. You know, Francisco Scaramanga. He was raised in circles. He became uh, he became a shooter. I think it was by twelve and by fifteen. Um, he uh, um, he became a uh, um, a less uh, a bad a uh, probably less uh, a less paid uh, a hitman until he became successful the best shooter and uh, one million dollars is actually his hit contract you know he's the best assassin and uh, double seven has been now the target of this well known assassin and uh, and of course uh, Scaramanga. The well-known assassin, he uh, holds, um, he holds, um, um, he holds, um, um, uh, what was already that, um, that, that soul, uh, that soul acts, um, um, <clears throat> The Solex Agitator in his hand, you know, um, he has a high-tech solar power plant, you know, in possession, and he's planning to sell to to sell this to the high the, to sell this plant to the high binder. He has the Solex Agitator in his possession, um, which he also uses from the sun, you know, from the sun, and uh, also MI6, you know. They gave Bond uh, um, the mission to get the back the the Solex Agitator, you know, because this is the face. Uh, this is actually the face of the energy crisis back in 1973, because they the Britain did not overcome this, you know, and uh, yeah, and James Bond, I was seven gets uh, a new assignment to get this uh, uh, Solex Agitator together, you know, and uh, he's been assigned by Mary Goodnight, you know the. Um, his assistant, you know, from MI6, and while his uh, while, while his first lead brings him, you know, from Beirut, he brings him to uh, uh, to Hong Kong, you know, and there he submits a Hong Kong uh, contact by Toxen Oh, you know, um, Sun Tech Oh, you know, Lieutenant Hip, his bonds contact in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong. And uh, Sante Koch plays a good guy in this movie. He plays the bad guy, Colonel Yin, in, uh, Brad, uh, in Missing in Action 2, the beginning. And he also plays uh, uh, another bad guy in, um, in Steel Justice with, uh, uh, with Martin Coe. He plays another bad guy, you know. And Sante Koch plays Lieutenant Hip, wants Hong Kong contact, and a good guy in this movie. You know, and of course, then Bond brings him to Thailand, you know, and which also brings him to this island that I just mentioned it. Um, that just uh, m mentioned it. Phanang Bay, Thailand, you know, which is the final island, you know, which is this island, you know. And uh, yeah, and of course, um, <clears throat> of course, the, uh, the that's the assignment, you know. Um, James Bond becomes, you know, 007, he becomes a target, you know, 007 becomes the target from a known assassin, you know, and which he has a golden uh, a golden gun, you know, which was, uh, which was actually a fictional gun, but was um, 4.2 millimeter single shot handgun, you know, one shot, when one kill, and um, sadly, uh, it's only that scene, you know, um, but the the golden gun was actually um, manufactured um, by a special effect with a uh, with a uh, jo Josh Steers, you know, um, which uh, he designed the golden gun, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I seriously, I mean, I really do love this film to death, you know. Um, like I said, would like to see would like to see um, the the Thailand. Um, uh, the Thailand panic by Thailand, Thailand. I would like to see it, you know. And this is the this the the first time, you know. The, when you see, you only live twice, you know. When Bond was on Japan, in this movie, he's actually in Thailand, and you see a kickbox match, you know. And also, Mount Adams, she appears in this movie. Um, she was later in Octopussy, the lead role, and she plays um, she uh, she plays Andrea Anders. 
Um, she's a mistress of Scaramanga, and she's the one that sent a bullet to uh, MI6 headquarters the, with his name on it, 007. And Bond, you know, he um, Bond wants to find Scaramanga himself, you know, since he's a target because the list is uh, that long, you know. And, um, and I, I read that, that um, when you see, um, uh, when you actually see James Bond, you know, go to this hotel and uh, he sees um, showering Andrea Anders, you know, and she's, uh, get, she's getting dressed, you know, and Bond grabs her, twists her arm, you know, and he punches her and hits her, you know. Um, uh, I, um, Guy ha Hamilton um, demanded that uh, James Bond should be more... Uh, should be more tougher, the, the, like, like it's in the novel, Ian Fleming's novel, that he should be more tougher, and, um, yeah, and of course, um, Bond, you know, um, of course, um, James Bond, you know, he, um, uh, I mean, Roger Moore, this like that scene, you know, he stated that Bond could have used with his charm, but he had to film that, you know, by twisting Andrea's arm and punch and hitting her, you know, slapping her in the face, you know, to get information. Um, uh, Roger Moore, this slide that scene, he stated that uh, he could he got the information with his charm, but uh, Guy Hamilton, the director, did not allow him. And he also hated the other scene, you know, in which he pushed uh, that kid in the water. He disliked that scene. And um, also, um, and, uh, uh, also, um, um, also when when um, when Roger Moore, you know, uh, felt that bow chase scene in the clongs, you know, he uh, he fought twice. The first time wasn't proposed because the producers told him not to, and the second time was accident. And when he opened the 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 the, the, the eyes, he saw what caretakers did with the bodies underwater, you know, and it was uh, gross and shocking, you know. And Brit England, you know, um, also read the news that Maud Adams had been cast. She became, uh, you know, she became upset thinking Adams had been selected to play Mary Goodnight, you know, but producers liked her and uh, uh, Brit Eklund, you know, she got the role for Mary Goodnight, you know, she re she uh, wanted to play the Bond girl and she contacted the producers, you know, and uh, uh, because after she saw Dr. No, she was uh, interested uh, by playing, um, by playing, uh, by playing a Bond girl, you know, and that's her, you know, Brit Eklund, she's still alive, you know, by the way, rest in peace, Roger Moore, Underrated Bond ever. Um, I love the man with the golden gun. You know, it's such an epic movie, in my opinion. Um, still, I still prefer this movie, Live and Let Die, about the man with the golden gun. Um, the music score was once again made uh, by John Barry. Previously was George Martin, you know, which is much better score, in my opinion. Um, the song, the title song, The Man with the Golden Gun, has been uh, performed and uh, sung by Lulu. Um, and yeah, I, I love the final shots. I mean, uh, th this is actually a real uh, serious Bond. I mean, this movie gets tons crap on it. It's really serious Bond, you know. Um, I definitely think that the first three movies that, uh, actually the first four movies that Roger Moore did were great, you know, or the five, you know. Um, but uh, also, I still, I still do wish, you know, that, that this movie will be more about assassin mano a mano, you know, because the final showdown, this is the first time Roger Moore fires his water PPK, you know, and uh, the final, uh, the final scene, you know, when Goodnight, she's kidnapped, um, and she also do, does have that uh, Solex, uh, um, how was already Solex, um, Agitator, you know, that she that she has solace ag agitator and there's a car chase, you know. And also, um yeah, she uh Skarmenga and his uh accomplice dwarf, you know, midget um knickknack, um they they escape with this plane, you know, with with with, uh, with car transform himself into a plane, they escape from Thailand, you know, and also um we also see JVW Pepper, uh, played by Clifton James, you know. Um, Clifton James, um, he also did, um, 
Clifton James, you know, um, he also did return from Live Let Die, you know, and he was in this movie, which is awesome, you know, he was in this movie as J.W. Pepper, but I still think that he's much better paced in this movie, you know, Live and Let Die, but um, Guy Hamilton liked him, he liked Clifton James, and he asked the, the writer Tom Mankiewicz to write him in the film, so J.W. Pepper returned, you know, like he's on a holiday, you know, um, yeah, Richard Mayburn, Tom Mankiewicz did, uh, did, did the screenplay, which it was awesome, you know. And I like J.V.W. Pepper, just in the in Living Let Die, it was much better, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's also, <clears throat> there's also when, um, when we find out the, 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 the next lead, you know, brings Bond to this guy, you know, high, uh, hi-fi, um, which uh, I wrote down somewhere. Um, 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 high fat, um, a Thai millionaire in the industrialist, and of course partner with uh, Scaramanga. You know he uh, uh, he he was a high binder for for the Solex agitator. You know, um, and of course for the Solex plant. Uh, and of course, um, uh, Scaramanga then of course kills him, you know, you know, and also High Fat brings Bond, you know, into, uh, into this karate school, you know, in that time the scientists, they were, uh, they were this, uh, uh, martial arts films very popular and they decided to write in the script, uh, uh, karate school, you know, and while Bond, you know, he's waiting, he sees demonstration karate, this guy, who is demonstration karate is actually a kata, a Shotokan karate style, you know, which I recognized that, you know, that was kata the guy was used. And when Roger Moore goes, you know, we, uh, uh, he bows, he just kicks him, you know, and he bows once again, you know, Roger Moore. And this guy, um, I wrote down, um, Chula, played by Yao Lin Chen, shows up being uh, Bond's opponent, and of course Bond fights him, then escapes, you know, Bond escapes, and uh, and we, there's uh, like a few uh, martial artists, you know, dressed in a uh, uh, um, in dress uh, dressed in white kimono shows up, and uh, there's uh, 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 Sun Ko, you know, because he's a good guy, you know, um, as Lieutenant Hip and his two nieces, you know, um, his niece one and two, you know, the first one was Q uh, U N, and the other one was Ju Yi you know. She was uh, the first one, Snara, the first one, the second was Cha. They both used martial arts, you know. Her uh, dad wa was a karate sensei and he was teaching them how to defend themselves. And he, he, uh, they both go and kick ass, you know. And like I said, Bond escapes, uh, then Bond goes in this boat, you know. Um, in the, uh, I think I wrote somewhere down, um, the, I think was, um, um the the films that he the um the clonks you know in the clonks you know that that scene that he escaped you know um there was a car chase um there was also this car chase you know the this all uh guy hamilton and john barry they both like read it you know to put the whistle in the, this one you know but this was the real stunt um but 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 that stand that doesn't actually um that much bother me. I thought I read that, that this is one of the lowest grossing Bond movies that fun combined with behind the scenes problems, you know, nearly made this film final Bond movie and delay production the next entry of the franchise, the clunks, you know. And of course, I forgot to mention the finale and the showdown, you know, Bond against this assassin, you know, Scaramanga, you know, Bond as dressed as a puppet, he, he kills and shoots Scaramanga, and uh, Britt Eklund, um, uh, where, where there's actually the second explosion, you know, um, there was actually, um, Yeah, there was actually um, the the second explosion. Um, 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 yeah, the second explosion. Um, Britt Eklund admitted to being terrified while filming the scene 
where she and Sir Roger Moore, you know, escape from Scaramanga's Island in his um, in his autobiography, you know. Um, yeah, uh, she was terrified, you know, the explosions. That was uh, that's the, one of the reasons why I love this movie. You know, why it definitely is one of my favorite Bond films. Why it's one of my favorite Roger Moore films because uh, I love the explosions, practical effect. You know, just like in Hard Bullet. You know, that's why Hard Bullet is in my top ten favorite Bond uh, and my favorite action movies of all time. You know. And uh, the man, the golden gun, and you let that is both my favorite, my personal favorite Bond films of all time, you know. And uh, of course, um, yeah, the explosion, you know, that the explosion was actually for real, you know, it was done for real, it was practical done, you know. And uh, yeah, Brit Eklund was terrified the explosion. And uh, of course, um, in uh, Roger Moore's uh, autobiography, um, you know, uh, Moore pointed out one practical uh, shot right before the second explosion goes off. You know, when Eklund falls to the floor, according to Eklund, that wasn't acting. You know. Uh, Moore came back, picked her up, and helped her uh, uh, go on. His arms was around her back as the second explosion go off. He felt uh, the tiny hairs on her uh, on on her skin get signed. You know, um, yeah. But that uh, that scene wasn't in the film. They deleted. But <clears throat> when um, Roger Moore, you know, he goes and tries to get that. Uh, Solex educator from that uh, uh, Solex machine, you know, from that Solex machine, and he tries to to take it off, you know, because um, because uh, with that laser, you know, or like demonstration laser, Vince Kamenga destroys Bond's plane, you know. Um, of course, um, Bond. Of course, um, uh, Roger Moore. There was a, before the second. There was a second explosion. And um, there was a second explosion, and of course, um, uh, the actress Britt Eklund, you know, when she was running, and uh, there was a the, the the explosion goes off, you know, there's a the first explosion goes off, and they both running together, they fall down, you know, that was for real, that wasn't acting, that was for real, you know, and when Roger Moore picks her up, that scene it wasn't in the film, you know, it was it was the next shot when they both running away, you know. But I like the I, I like the island. I like that island. Um, I like the that island. Phanang um, Bay, Thailand. You know, um, I like that island. I like the that well between Bond, um, between Bond and between Bond and Scaramanga. I also love the 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 song. You know, where there is uh, Al, Al Capone and where there is Al Capone uh, in a plastic. You know. In a plastic doll, you know, and also Mark, uh, um, this uh, this uh, known hitman, um, in the opening scene, you know, um, Mark Lawrence, you know, Rodney, he's the hitman, you know, he was in Diamond Star Forever, he had a small role, and he was also in this movie with Bart Spencer, uh, Kane Gato, you know, he was the he was the killer, uh, the hitman that tried to kill Scaramanga, but got shot in the head, you know. He was got shot in the head. So the man with the golden gun, to me, is a classic, you know. Especially the, the finale when they uh, run into this ship, you know. They both run into this ship and the, there's a second explosion. And that was really uh, for real, you know. That's done for real. And Roger Moore was also um, uh, best in his shape, you know. He didn't do that much his stunts, you know. Um, even the fire segments were, were, were great for uh, choreographed, you know. The explosions were practical, they're done for real, you know, the the explosions. And also Nick Neck survives in this movie because he's been captured by Bond on a boat, you know. He's been captured by Bond, he's not killed, which is cool, you know. And of course Bond shoots in one shot and kills Karamanga. And I read that even though uh, Christopher Lee and Roger Moore in this movie are enemies, you know, and uh, real, in real life they were friends, you know, they got along. And uh, Christopher Lee uh, said that uh, Francisco Scaramanga was actually his, famous, uh, his uh, favorite role of his, you know, and also 
I think that um, uh, Christopher Lee did a perfect job, you know, he did a perfect, great job, great acting job, you know, I love that, that, that Scaramanga was smiling, that he wasn't so menacing and terrifying villain, he's definitely one of his Bond villains, you know, and Scaramanga tries to kill um, Bond, you know, like, um, um, Lota Clip, she tried, you know, Dr. No, Goldfinger Ojop, you know, and uh, of course, um, they tried to kill him. Um, Blofeld, he tried to kill him. Now, uh, Scaramanga's, now it's Scaramanga's turn to try to kill James Bond, you know. And uh, I will, I really do think that this movie is definitely deserves to be one of the best Bond films. Like I said, I have a friend that this film is his favorite Roger Moore film. His yes, favorite Roger Moore film, you know. Um, my favorite, uh, I I uh, I still think it's going to be Moonraker because I I just love that movie to death. But I will get into it why you know um, why Moonraker is my favorite. Um, I still don't know, I think probably it's going to be my f fourth or third, I don't know, uh, it's going to be hard to review, like I said, it's going to be hard to rank Roger Moore movies because I grew watching them more, you know, as a kid, you know, I grew watching them and uh, I don't think that Roger Moore is, uh, is, uh, is the bad Bond, you know, the worst Bond, I disagree. That will be George Lazenby and Daniel Craig in my opinion, fuck both of them, you know. Uh, Daniel Craig, what he did? Two good movies and two sucky? <laughs> Fuck him, you know. Fuck Daniel Craig and his fan Luther, lunatic boys, you know. Yeah, that, I said that, you know. Um, where was I? Uh, the Man in the Golden Gun. That's gonna be hard, you know, because I said Lily Dice Devon, my third favorite film, you know. Um, I still I still love The Spy Who Loved Me and uh, For Your Eyes Only, which I kind of enjoy more, you know, uh, Moonraker. Um, but this is going to be kind of hard, you know, it's going to be really hard to pick them um, um, because I'm going to watch them. Um, maybe I'm going to say that this is my second favorite Roger Moore film, you know, Moonraker Prime number one. Probably will let die number three, you know, maybe number four for your eyes only because I love for your eyes only the spy who loved me. But watching this movie again, you know, it was really, it was really a beautiful experience, you know, Bond in Thailand and Hong Kong, you know, we have a, a kickbox match, you know, and Maud Adams, Sandra Anders was another Bond girl, she was killed in one shot, you know, because she stole Solax, uh, uh, she stole that um, Solax, um, <laughs> Um, agitator, you know, she stole the Solex Agitator um, from Scaramanga, you know, so that he could use it for Solex, uh, uh, for the Solex Solar Power Plant, you know, high-tech solar power plant. And I love that this is the face of the uh, the energy crisis, I love that, you know. That's one of the reasons, the final shots is the best of the film, you know, because um, uh, uh, Brit, um, not Brit Eklund, um, uh, Mary good night she clocks down uh, um this guy um she 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 clocks down um uh, she clocks down um the maintenance man you know by Scaramanga you know she she uh, clocks the the maintenance man and he falls in the pool of liquid helium uh, causing an uh, uh, upset of the solar plant's uh, balance you know and Bond managed to retrieve the Solex unit you know the Solex drag agitator or Solex unit, you know, um, and uh, uh, of course Bond and uh, um, Good Night they escape, you know, they escape from Scaramanga's island, you know, and, and now this island, um, this island is now a tourist island, you know, um, Panang Bay, which is a James Bond island. It is uh, every year came tourists, and like I said, my uh, co-worker she told me that that her um, her friend she was she was visiting. Uh, this island, you know, um, uh, this island, Pang, uh, Pang in Bay, Thailand, by uh, by sending a video and uh, the pictures of the island, you know, and I would really love to see this island. And this movie was shot one point sixty six, you know, uh, which was uh, which it wasn't with two bars, you know, just like this movie, it wasn't with two bars, you know, it wasn't two bars. Um. Merry Good Night, I would say definitely one of my favorite Bond girls. 
I read it like harsh critics, you know, British critics, they called her, um, they, uh, they actually, uh, called her, um, um, hmm, I did read her, I did uh, note, wrote the note, um, 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 that, um, yeah, she's been described by the critics of the Sunday uh, Mirror as being as a stunning, stupid, blonde British agent, you know. A stonish, stupid, blonde British agent, which I disagree. I like her. I think she did a perfect job. Um, I forgot to mention this movie made $7 million worldwide, $20 million box office was $97 million, was the lowest grossing bond. Um, it, it almost caused, you know, to be the last bond, you know, they, that, that's one of the reasons why the Spy Kulami came out three years later after the release of this film. But I think it's definitely the most underrated, um, uh, with Leon Let Die, I think Roger Moore is underrated bond, I also think this movie is underrated. I'll say best bond, because I enjoyed it, you know. I don't like John Barry's music score, and I wish there were more villains, because I kind of think that, um, Nick Knack is kind of weak villain, he's, uh, because he's a midget, you know, and there's like only one person, you know, one assassin, but I thought that the story idea was great, I just wish there would be more powerful villains like the first movie, Leon Let Die had, you know, we had like Adam, Whisper, um, uh, Mr. Big, Aka Kananga, and of course, um, uh, Tihi, T, you know, Tihi was great, um, so yeah. And this is also the first time in which M says to Q, shut up Q. He tells him twice, shut up Q, in this movie, the first time, you know, which is another cool sequence. Um, also, Jimmy Pepper uh, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is once again, you know, which he falls down the water by elephant, you know, the elephant joke. Um... But Guy Hamilton did, uh, did also, he did terrific uh, direction, um, Tom Mankiewicz and uh, uh, Richard Bymount did a great script. Um, I don't know, I, I love this film. For 1974, I love this film, you know. Um, as for the cast, you know, we have beside Roger Moore, Christopher Lee, which he did great as a, as a villain. Definitely one of the best Bond villains, Karamanga's gonna try to kill Bond. Uh, Mount Adams, Andrea Anders uh, as, uh, um, as Scaramanga's mistress and later Bond girl, she did a great job. You know, Harvey with a chance to rest in peace, um, a sneak knack, he was on okay. Um, yes, he uh, committed suicide, he was in Fantasy Island, you know, but he committed suicide, you know, um, I've read it. Uh, that, I've read it that he had a really sad, uh, sad life, so rest in peace, I hope he's in heaven. Um, um, Clifton James was uh, was okay. He was much better in Live Let Die. This movie, he was much better. I prefer him this movie. You know, um, I also love the the fictional gun. You know, the golden gun, the fictional golden gun. I love that. You know, which was manufactured by I think it was John um, John uh, John Ste Steers. You know, by a special effects wizard. But it's a fictional uh, gun. You know, um, it was actually. Um, it was actually only 4.2 mm, mm single shot handgun, one shot, one kill, you know, like Scarmanga um, in the opening scene, he goes and kills, um, uh, uh, he goes and kills Mark Lawrence Rodney, you know, he shots him right in the head, one shot, one kill, you know, and uh, in, uh, I think it was in Hong Kong, you know, he was aiming and he was shooting, but he did not, uh, shot uh, James Bond, he shot the other man in the head, you know, or, he, or hi, uh, this guy, um, this guy, um, uh, or this guy, you know, um, try to find this guy, um, hi, uh, I can't find, hi, fat, you know, you know, Richard Lowe, high fat, you know, he goes and shot, shoots him, you know, which is another cool scene. Eh? Um, yeah, um, I love the island, the explosions, that was practical fact, that wasn't, 
that were the, when they uh, ran to this uh, ship, you know, such a beautiful, um, beautiful shot, beautiful camera. I saw the picture quality in this Blu-ray is really astonishing, it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It's uh, wonderful to watch. We also have the audio commentary, audio commentary by Roger Moore on this movie. Um, you know, also audio commentary, director jo uh, Guy Hamilton. Um, also, rest in peace. Guy Hamilton also uh, passed away, you know. This movie has tons of special features. Um, this is how the Blu-ray looks like, the man with the golden gun. I think that uh, I think that is uh, definitely one of the best Bond films. You know, Roger Moore is awesome. I love Roger Moore, and these two these two are actually my favorite films. Yes, those two are my favorite films. You know, those two are my favorite films. They're both my favorite films. You know, The Man with the Golden Gun. Um, like I said, a friend loves this movie. It's his favorite Roger Moore film. I think it's a good one movie. I think, in my opinion, it's uh, another, it's uh, actually another best Bond film that Roger Moore did, you know, and yeah. So that's my movie review on The Man with a Golden Gun, um, song by Lulu, and uh, based on the novel by Ian Fleming. Thanks for watching, and we'll be talking to the third review on Roger Moore. That's gonna be The Spy Who Loved Me. Take care, I'm out, bye.